Hello guys and welcome to the Heroes Hype Amateur Series. I am Gillyweed. It's been forever since I've been here and I'm so excited to be back. And joining me is Kai Berries. What's up my friend? Hey Gilly, it is so good to see you again. I've missed you my friend. Oh, I've missed you too. It's so exciting to be back here. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We've got, uh, I'm not sure how many teams. Like 12-ish, I'm not even gonna try. Like 10 to 12-ish, it's, it's, it's gonna be a good time. And we're starting with Intensity versus Noble Prime. And they are intense. Uh, they made us wait a minute, but now they're in it. They're, they're in like Flynn. All right, let's hop over to the picks then so we can check it out. Looks like our battleground is gonna be Cursed Hollow. This will be a best of one. I think we'll have two best of ones and then potentially two best of threes. And uh, looking at it, it looks like Intensity will be first pick, first ban, with bans on Zeratul and Lior Leoric. Super standard stuff from these teams so far. Yeah, we actually didn't see many Leoric bans uh, last week, and that was to the detriment of a lot of teams. Pretty much anyone who walked away with Leoric walked away with a win as did you, well. Did they Wraith walk away with the win? <laughs> yeah, they did. They <laughs> spooky walked away with that win. <coughs> well, and and, nobody's going to get to walk away with him this time, and... We are going to see Johanna be picked up. She seems to be kind of that second favorite warrior of choice. It's really Leoric and Johanna, and then everyone kind of scrambles to figure out the warrior they want after that. But Noble are going to get their first choice of damage dealer, Kael'thas, and then following up with Uther. Man, Uther picks have been super early. Was it that way last week too, friend? Uh, it was. He was probably the most picked healer as well. Oh, yeah. Looking for those divine shields all yeah. over the place. Since since the change to cleanse, he's really gotten to the point where he is almost first ban worthy in some games, and then um, for sure picked up before the second bans come out. Um, now intensity do have two more picks. They're gonna go Jaina Rhaegar, so they really want to make sure that they do have the ability to have more of those burst healing, which makes a lot of sense. Um, especially if they're concerned about, well, it could it could be that they favor having Rhaegar over Malfurion anyway, not knowing these supports, or it could be that they really want to make sure they ha want to have the burst versus uh, a potential bursty comp from Noble. Yeah, I could see them wanting to cover that burst damage. I mean, Kael'thas, we did see a little bit of a nerf to Chain Bomb, but he's still capable of putting out quite a bit of burst damage, mm -hmm. and he's usually the start to a heavy burst comp. doesn't have to be, but... With Uther, the Divine Shield usually covering some heavy initiation. It, it's a good bet. It, it's going that direction. Yeah, I could easily see them adding on something like even potentially a Kerrigan. They have the Uther, so they've shown that it's a potentially a melee assassin type thing. These guys are moving pretty fast through the draft. We've got an Anubarak ban, so, and Muradin, really focusing on taking some of those warriors out. Warriors have been... The, a big priority for these teams lately, and now I'm kind of wondering what Noble will get in terms of their front line. Right, Muradin banned out by intensity, that makes sense, they already have their main tank, mm -hmm. uh, but Noble banning out a new barrack, maybe they're worried about intensity picking up a double tank, but that also narrow, narrows the field for them as well. Yeah, and if they're worried about a dive, it's interesting to me that they pick a new barrack to ban and not something like a Tyrael if they're worried about that dive into the back line that Definitely. he might offer. But on the same, on the same side, it, he just does offer a lot of control, he has a lot of stuns. Noble is going to go for Arthas, and I'm pretty pumped for that. I always love the Lich King. I've got one more pick here. Could go with a damage dealer, could go with a second warrior if that's something right. I want him to do. We've seen Arthas paired a lot with other tanks lately. Yeah. He's been seen in a lot of two warrior games, but what other warrior is really left for him to run with? Uh, ETC has come back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, stitches, potentially, but they may just choose to run them. What they could do is they could run them like a push comp and potentially get the, Silva or the Cindragosa. Now they've grabbed Abathur, so that really makes me think that they, Something melee is yeah, going to be in that last spot. Yeah, especially with the Uther still. Uther and Abathur. What are you thinking? An Illidan? It could be Illidan. Illidan would be the, the classic choice, the renaissance choice for this team, as <laughs> it were. Uh, Kerrigan kind of fits in there. The Butcher has been used in, the, in this comp. Um, let's not forget that in this series we've allowed Rexar as well. Oh, yeah. 
they, they could do something really wild and uh, go on the hunt. That is true. It's, it's kind of scary to draft a brand new hero, but I guess it's... Terrifying. Yeah, if, if, you're, if there's going to be a place to do it, this amateur series would be the place to try it out, as it is more of a friendly place for teams to come together, start making teams, start working on getting toward being able to compete at higher levels. Intensity have grabbed Nazebo. I love this pick for them. They've got a lot of poke potential, which is going to be very ne necessary in some of those fights around the tributes, which, of course, is the objective of this battleground. And then they're going to follow it up with Rainer. So triple ranged with the Johanna front line here for Intensity. It's a lot of damage there for Intensity. There Noble is... Prime, though, taking Illidan. Yeah, like we thought. Mm -hmm. It's a very classic team comp here, something we've, we've seen for months. Yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty excited about the Illidan um, Abathur Arthas, of course. I like that. I, I feel like sometimes it's really difficult to play Illidan into the Arthas because you go in to him and then he's got the, the slows and he's just dealing the constant damage with the Frozen Tempest. So I like that they were able to get that together. I'm wondering if Arthas now will go for Cindergosa if they're going to be looking for more of a push or if now looking at with the Illidan and the Kael'thas, if we might see him going Army of the Dead just for the survivability, trying to like have these really um, like long drawn out fights and while they do that, then Abathur could potentially be pushing. I could see the argument for Army of the Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, Uther is probably going to have to focus a lot on Illidan, and if not Illidan, perhaps Kael'thas, since he is so yeah. squishy. Arthas might need to take care of himself a little more. Also, on the, the side of intensity, they have a lot of damage. Jaina capable of doing quite a bit of damage. Raynor, we've seen putting out large numbers. And Nazebo is like the sleeper cell. You don't think he's capable of a lot of damage, but those frogs and spiders really do add up over time. They definitely do, especially once you get leaping spiders later on, if that's the build they're going to be going for. Uh, those will chase for forever. And that's why I mentioned they have such good poke which is going to be really nice for them in those fights. They can kind of just sit back, whittle down Noble Prime until they're ready for the engage, and then from there, hopefully win a fight and then pick up the tributes. Um, did you see much Rainer play last week? None at all. Oh, we're in for a treat. I'm pretty pumped about that. He's started to see a little bit of a resurgence. It's been, or well, can I call it a resurgence? Was he ever big? No, I, maybe... <laughs> when the game first came out, but <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to see him here. We'll see what they, uh, they choose to go with him. There's a couple of different builds people have been running with them, so we'll talk about that later on. But on the left-hand side, we do have Intensity, who do have that Rainer with Dark Chimera playing him. We've got Perseverance on the Johanna. Tone Phone, that is an awesome name, on Rhaegar Smir Smikies? Smikies? on Jaina and Kagok playing Zebo. All right, and on the right-hand side of the map, we have Noble Prime. Coffee Rage is on Arthas. Trash Talk on Kael'thas. <laughs> Ultimated on Illidan. Terror on Uther. And uh, HX9 on Abathur. Hex9, maybe? Hex9? Yeah, I am unsure about what he is. HX9. All right. Looks like in the top lane, uh, Noble Prime is is looking at sniffing around. No, just Arthas. Coffee Rage, beautiful name by the way. Gonna go in alone on three people up here. But Arthas probably fine in the early game. Getting the Abathur hat. He needs Ooh, to walk away. Ooh, that zombie wall though was never huge. mind. I take it all back about the probably <laughs> fine. Even with the Abathur hat, that is a lot of damage to have to deal with. Good zoning there by Kagok the Nazebo player, and yeah, they've got a really strong push here up top, and right now, really, the only soak here is that Abathur hat, but they're being fairly, they're not being as aggressive as I thought maybe they would be, especially knowing that Arthas was out of here, but it's still going to be a lot for Arthas to handle, for sure. Respectful of the early game tower damage and perhaps uh, Regar's mana in the early game, mm -hmm. not wanting to push their luck. Arthas is back, but he's still all alone, and after getting schooled a little bit, might not want to go too deep in. Yeah, and once again, we're seeing the zombie wall try to zone already out of ammo on this tower, so really good, strong push here. And I'm just trying to net what early experience leads they can. That goes into 
I mean, tribute fights later on, if you can be ahead in talents, that's huge. It also just opens up the ability for pushing into the structures later on when you get something like a boss or even, uh, even your standard mercenary camps if you can really take down the towers like this. Absolutely, and Intensity is achieving that gold. They are up about half a level over Noble Prime. Uh, if they can multiply that going through these first two tributes, that is a huge advantage at the third tribute. Absolutely. We're seeing a very early uh, Siege Giant pick up here from Ultimated, so great job in knowing exactly when those pop up. Normally you don't see Illidan as going after uh, camps until he's four. That's when he does pick up a... Oh, Coffee Rage! Oh no, once again, the zombie wall is going to be too much for him, and he's going to go down. And now this tower should be forfeit too. Just um, Kagak, the Nazebo player, doing very well with those zombie walls. Great placement. Yeah. So yeah, Ultimate did pick up Immolation, and it was a little dicey. He's pretty low, but he was able to pick up that early Siege Giant. And that's one of the really good benefits from an Illidan, is that he can Hex solo nine like is, that. Uh, the Abathur needs to move out of here. He is out of protection, slug away. This is an incredible amount of pressure already on a floor. They're completely fine with just at least for now, giving up that tribute in terms of putting damage here on this fort. And I, I don't blame that at all. If they no, can get that agree. down, yeah, that's it's way more uh, way more important. Uh, a fort at three minutes into the game will take one tribute, I think, any time. Terror, the Uther player coming up now to uh, support Arthas, realizing the threat in the top lane is getting a little out of control. That puts the fight at the Tribute now almost at even since Abathur is also supporting them up top. That's three and three missing from this fight down at the Tribute in the bottom lane. It looks like Trash Talk on the side of Mobile, uh, Noble Prime is actually attempting to cap, but not so much. Yeah, I kind of feel like the, it's a too little too late thing, and it pulled Uther all the way up there. Now he's all the way back down here. Thankfully for them, Intensity, the members of Intensity who are here are pretty low, but look at the level lead just from this strong push that they've got. A full level, they've got level 7 talents. It's something Noble Prime have to watch out for now with these fights here. And they're going to be rotating back in very healthy, which is exactly what's happening now. That's why Terror is getting taken down very low. He's going to be taking out a great penetrating round, securing that takedown for uh, Intensity, and that's just going to further that experience lead, all the while keeping up the pressure up top from Kagok. Yeah, absolutely. I like the aggression from Regar, Tone Phone, uh, going in very hard in during that fight there. He had no fear, but he was full life, full mana versus low low life people, able to go in and get plenty of extra wolf damage off of Regar. Really nice. And speaking of Regar, he and Jaina are already rotating right back up to go after this fort once again. It's really surprising. Sometimes when you see these early pushes, they get the wall, they get the towers, and then they rotate into another lane and try to do the same thing there. But no, they have been completely fine with continuing this push, and that's going to net them a super early fort here, nearly up to level 9, almost a level and a half advantage here. Looking at some of the builds that we have so far, it looks like... Rainer is going for that season marksman, so he's going to be trying to get um, those talents there. And a great rotation coming in. They will be able to pick up the takedown on Jaina. They might be able to get Rhaegar here. He's gone into the Ghost Wolf form. He's trying desperately to slow them down with the... Oh, that's, that's not the way I thought that he was going to go, but he is in Ghost Wolf form now. Will Ultimate be able to get him? He's trying. He's desperate. He will be able to pick it up. Well, the, him going that kind of wonky way didn't allow Nazebo mm -hmm. uh, to actually stay in lane. I didn't see any minions there. I thought maybe he was trying to soak, but there was really nothing to soak. Uh, he couldn't really go in turn to engage again because he needed at the tribute fight, but one of the other members of Intensity was able to pick up the tribute uh, without contest. So maybe they were just distracting for that tribute fight. Uh, there had to be some kind of method to mm -hmm. Regar's madness, or at least we hope there was. Yeah, I like the Distractix idea. If they're yeah. able to pick that up, they're almost to level 10 now, so they'll have the heroic abilities. And it's going to be dicey whether or not Noble can get their own heroic abilities before the next tribute, which is basically going to net intensity a free curse. And there it is, the tribute spawning. 10 seconds, there's no way we're going to have heroic abilities here. I'm not sure what Noble are going to do here, but they need to create some sort of... If they're not going to go for this, I think they need to create some sort of, like push in lanes, some way of slowing down intensity, especially with this curse. And Raynor taking the Hyperion 
for his heroic ability, so he's just going to add on to their pushing power. Trying to fight under a Hyperion can be very deadly uh, with all Jaina's AoE as well. And here that is, example for us right now. Ah, the Yamato Cannon does so much damage to structures. They're going to take out those towers and working, starting to work on a fort too. And Ultimate it is apparently just biding his time there. They do have a good push happening on bottom. That Ravenous Spirit though, there's nothing really to stop it at all. Divine Shield will be able to save Arthas from it, and that does look like they won't get any takedowns off of that. That's, that's pretty nice, but that is something that's going to be a problem for them in the future because they really, they don't have a lot of stuns for that at all. No, not many on their team. Uh, besides Kael'thas's gravity laps or Uther getting very close right. with his hammer, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Arthas getting very low. It looks like he's going to go down to Johanna. Yes, he does. They had already lost Illidan, so there is a lot of their damage, and there is all of their damage with the death of Kael'thas. Whew, that's going to be a keep. Mm -hmm. that, that is a lot of damage from off of a first curse, so great job capitalizing on that from intensity. It looks like they're going to rotate around and maybe even start working. This might be... So might be overextension. They need to be careful here. Uh, realizing they are up three levels, it's still something that could come back to bite them, especially because, well, I guess they really only have the Phoenix there. But still, Arthas can do a lot of damage. They're still working on Kagok now. Kagok's going to go down. Perseverance has to get out of there, dropping the Iron Skin. May not be able to get through there, too. A Blizzard is trying to help slow them down so Perseverance can get away. And uh, Blind is nice there, but there is the Gravity Labs in the Death Coil, and now that should be the end of Johanna here. Right, the Death Timers are still very, very short exactly. for the members of Noble Prime, so even though they were almost completely wiped at that first inner keep, they were able to res within just 10, 15 seconds and come back with a force with all of their heroic abilities. Well, uh -oh. they've taken out Arthas. They don't have Johanna here, but Raynor's still going to be able to get Illidan too. And Rhaegar and Jaina are on the chase. We're going to see a Divine Shield on Uther. Ultimate Evolution comes in trying to make another Kael'thas, but first Kael'thas has already gone down. And they've successfully stopped this boss pickup here. So really strong aggression from Intensity, but knowing they're far enough ahead that they are able to play that way. Right. Noble Prime went in on that boss after taking down Johanna, thinking they could make, you know, capitalize on their momentum. But unfortunately, Intensity was just a bush away and decided that was not something they were going to allow. Even with four members up, their lead was heavy enough where they were able to turn on their enemies and fight them right under the boss. Guys, sorry, I just realized the overlay says 1-1. One, one. I will fix that on the break, because that is incorrect. This is a best of one, so it's 0-0. Zero, zero. I apologize for that. That still keeps them even. It so. does keep them sorry. even, and it still makes it like this is the last, uh, last game. Either way, it will be, but I'll make sure to fix it on there. Intensity now have picked up their golem, and they are now going in on Noble Prime's golem, the one we just saw that big team fight under. Uh, Noble Prime does know about it. They are scouting out the situation. They have at least three team members here waiting for Illidan to come up and join the fight before they engage. Perseverance uh, tanking the boss. Intensity almost has him taken down. Although that looks like Hyperion will come in here and the boss will be picked up for Intensity. Copy Rage very low. Illidan is already down. So they've already lost two members there and the Ancestral Healing does keep everyone alive. That is the issue with that ravenous spirit. Yes, there's stuns on Uther and Kael'thas, but Kael'thas is a skill shot, and he's so he's so squishy that he instantly is gonna be a target of so much and is gonna have to run away. Uther has to get, like you said, right up to it. And that was so good. Even if Intensity had somehow lost the boss there, they still had a boss pushing all the way on bottom two. So either way, they were going to most likely come out ahead. They had, they were so far ahead there that had they somehow lost that fight, lost that boss, it wouldn't have been too big of a deal. But now, this boss is on core, there's no shields left, and it looks like they might try to win the game here. With an Uther pickup, it definitely can happen. It looked like it was actually the boss who got that Uther kill as <laughs> yeah. well. It was a cool condemn into the slam, yeah. Yeah. And there it is, 3%, 2%. GG to the side of Intensity. Intense indeed they were. <laughs> a very strong presence throughout the entire game from the first second in to the last second out. They did not let up pressure. Yep, they were not messing around, that's for sure. 11 minutes, first game.
back, uh, and GG is too intensity. So, I will fix the overlay on break, but uh, we will be coming back with our next round of games. And I'm not sure what that will be next, guys, so stay tuned when we return uh, another game for you. See you soon.